Thank you for inviting me to do this little talk about sitting less and moving more. We have the very best evidence uh, from the Lancet Journal about the protective effects of regular physical activity. All-cause mortality, dying from any particular cause, is reduced if you're regularly active. Then things that I bet you discussed, and we mentioned the previous speaker, coronary heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, falling, metabolic syndrome, a kind of precursor for diabetes, type 2 diabetes, breast cancer and colon cancer, and an important mental health issue, depression. So I'm imagining that you probably touched on some of these topics as you were discussing, plus the more obvious things, increasing your fitness, uh, healthy body mass, helping with weight management, bone health, functional health, meaning as we get older, we can still live independently, get up out of the chair, do our own shopping, put the shopping away. Improved cognitive function. One of the biggest areas in the world of physical activity for health is this idea that being active keeps our brains in good shape. And the big topic at the moment, of course, for older adults is the increasing rates of dementia. We've got good evidence that regular activity helps prevent and even treat that. And for children too, we're suddenly realizing that regular physical activity at school and making learning active, getting children involved by getting up and down and doing things, helps their academic development as well. And it's got a dose response curve, another scientific term. So along the bottom of this graph, we've got low activity levels up to high activity levels. And on the vertical part of the graph, you've got the health benefit that is returned from that. Now, not unsurprisingly, the higher the levels of physical activity, the higher the benefit. But the important thing about a dose response is, even if your activity levels are low and you move along a little bit, configured by A on the bottom of the axis, then you get quite a big benefit on the ve vertical axis. And this means that if you don't feel you're that active, if people you know could be more active, they don't have to be hugely active to get benefit. The main benefit comes from getting low activities up a little bit higher. So the dose response curve is an important part of physical activity for health. And physical activity has reached pandemic proportions. It's from the Lancet Journal, again, the world's most prestigious medical journal, and they took a whole issue on the topic of physical activity for health. Never before had that been presented in that prestigious journal. And the editor said, physical inactivity is pandemic. Across the world, we've got lots of inactive people who if they got a little bit more active would benefit health. So how risky is it to be low on physical activity? Let's have a little comparison with smoking. Here are deaths caused in millions across the world. This comes from the Lancet series. And it's a global picture of all the available data on the countries where they could get information about smoking and about inactivity. So here's death caused in millions from smoking, 5.1 million. Have a little think to yourself, where is inactivity going to be here? Is it less than 5.1? Is it maybe the same as 5.1? Is it more than 5.1? If I went out onto uh, the bus uh, station over there and said to people, is smoking more dangerous than inactivity. Imagine what they would say. And there's the answer. So there are more deaths caused across the world from inactivity than is caused by smoking. But of course, not everyone knows that. Very few people know that. The people in the bus station would really not know that. But that's very good data published in The Lancet. And so another chance for you to think and talk to each other uh, always on our news, we've got what we ought to eat, five fruit and veg a day, how many units of alcohol is safe or not even safe to drink, 
uh, what sort of things we should be doing to promote our lifestyle. This is, in short form, what the chief medical officers of the United Kingdom recommend. And very few people in the room will have known it, even though we might know about fruit and veg or alcohol or whatever. So we've got four different bits to the recommendation. Uh, and along the top are all the things that we've already discussed the benefits that you might get from being regularly active. But on the left here, we've got the be active part, and this will be what most people know about. It's vigorous and moderate activity. If you're doing moderate activity, it's things like walking, cycling, swimming. And the idea is that you total up over the course of the week 150 minutes of that kind of activity. Now that sounds a lot, two and a half hours, it could be a half hour most days of the week. It could be 20 minutes one day. It could be an hour at the weekend where you've got more time. It all adds up and you're aiming towards 150 minutes. But remember that dose response curve. You don't need to get to 150 minutes to get benefit. But that's the goal that the government has set for us. Now, the advantage is if you like sports, here we've got badminton or running, and that is classed as vigorous activity, you don't need to do as much. It's half the amount, 75 minutes. And actually stair walking gets yourself into vigorous activity. Most of us don't do 75 minutes of stair walking in a week, so that would be a very long climb to the top of the Eiffel Tower or something, but any stair walking that you do gives you very good benefit because it's vigorous activity. So thinking of that and thinking of small changes, Think of the places where you meet an escalator and a stair. And for a wee while, like the kindness challenge, challenge yourself to always try and take the stairs and you'll be gaining valuable minutes of vigorous activity. But that aerobic bit, that be active bit, is just one bit of the message. We've got sit less in the middle. And this was, of course, part of the title of the little discussion we're having. And this is new knowledge, that even if you do that 150 minutes, if you sit a lot, extended sitting over the course of the day, and the figure is usually seven or eight hours that people talk about, this is not good for your health. So some of the benefit you get from your activity can be lost if you're also sitting a lot. So what can we do there? We can take breaks from sitting. That's why I'm getting up and down your feet because the evidence suggests that even these tiny breaks stimulate our systems all over again and reduces the bad effects of sitting. So we're trying to limit screen time, uh, sitting down time, office-based computer time, break up that sitting time. And then over to the right, we've got build strength and improve balance. And I describe these as the forgotten guidelines. We rarely hear about building strength as an important aspect of uh, being active for health. And you would do that perhaps by doing yoga, Pilates, these kind of classes, going to the gym, or actually continuing to do functional things like carrying your shopping, um, carrying things, putting them up in shelves. That continues to build your strength. And improving balance would probably forgotten altogether. We never pr perhaps practiced that. So these are the guidelines. These are for adults and older adults. Did anyone talk about what children need to do? Did anyone mention that? Anyone know? Anyone? Yep. They do have that in Scotland, the Daily Mile Challenge. And that's probably only a bit of the total that they need to do. Anyone know the total for kids? If you've got kids, they, that's it. They should be doing about 60 minutes of activity a day. And so that's a different thing if you've got kids to look out for in your lives. They need to do more than adults. And a mixture of all these things is involved for children as well. Making a plan of action is critical to making a small change that might change your world. I'm sure Susie would tell us that. But in the room, we've got some things to help. We've got Pass for All up in the corner. They've got a number of things, walking groups, pedometer packs. Most people have a pedometer on their phone, even if they don't know it, or you might have a Fitbit. There's one you can win at the back. I can see it from here. 
counting steps is a great motivational way of getting more active, mostly through walking. Walking is perfect, ideal exercise. It has been described as that. And that's the major way that most people might get started if you're thinking, what am I going to do? So pass are all have many things to help you up in the corner, including exercises for strength and balance. So the forgotten things, the sit and stand things, the balance things, they can give you a little leaflet on these very exercises if you want to take that away. Here in Glasgow, Glasgow Life has a number of opportunities. I don't know if uh, we managed to get them here, but the sports uh, leisure centres around the city have a great amount of activities that you could join in with if you come from Glasgow.